Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 18. We're going to be uh, dealing with the very first part of that chapter where Abraham receives uh, the presence of God. A guy comes to him in human form, and there's some things that Abraham does in receiving the Lord uh, that we can apply uh, today as we try to receive the presence of God in our own lives. Uh, the first thing that we can notice about this story is the fact that Abraham received God's presence in stillness. That is, Abraham allowed himself to be still long enough to recognize the presence of God there before him. Uh, in verse 1 of Genesis 18, it says, Now the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. So the Lord appeared to him while he was sitting at his tent. Abraham, as busy as he probably was, allowed for time to, for time of sitting and resting and probably thinking, contemplation, meditation, and even prayer. Uh, we don't know exactly what he was doing sitting there at the tent, but we do know that he was not busy. He was not uh, tending to uh, business affairs, uh, dealing with his shepherds or whoever else that he might have to deal with. He was just sitting. And, and even though that might seem like a small thing, uh, it's, it's very significant, especially when we go to apply it in our spiritual lives. You see, sometimes we are not able to receive the presence of God because we're just plain too busy, especially in America, in the United States, where we just pile up so many things onto our schedule that we rarely even have time to sit and think much less sit and pray and just uh, meditate on God and, and bring His presence into our lives and, and make His presence a reality in our lives. And so that's the first thing that we can do uh, to receive God's presence properly is just to set aside time, some quiet time, to sit and wait on the Lord and to allow uh, the reality of His presence to really sink into our minds and into our hearts. But also, uh, we see that Abraham received the Lord in eagerness as well. Um, in verses 2 and 3, uh, it said that he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I now, or if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. <laughs> so uh, he saw these men and he got up and he ran to meet them. And not only did he ran, run to meet them, he begged them, Hey, please do not pass by. I want you guys to spend the day with me. I want you guys to be here with me. And, and so that's our second point, that if we want to receive God's presence in the proper way, we've got to be eager about it. We, want, we need to have a heart that desires the presence of God above everything else. Who knows what was on Abraham's task list that day, to-do list. It might have been a thousand different things, but you know what? As soon as Abraham saw these guys, he ran out and said, I want to spend time with you. And that's what we need to tell the Lord. Lord, I know I might have a busy schedule today, but don't pass me by, Lord. Let your presence be real to me today, Lord. Stay near to me, God. I want you to be with me. I want to spend this day with you. we got to come to the Lord with eagerness, with desperation wanting Him in our lives. But then also we see that there was some reverence that Abraham uh, gave to these men. Uh, in verse 2, he ran. it says he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth. And then in verse 3 he says, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, you can just tell the reverence that he had uh, for these guys and, and the reverence that he had for the Lord. And when we come to the Lord, it's got to be in reverence. we got to come to the Lord knowing that He is the Creator of the universe, the magnificent God. Uh, he is El Shaddai, as He revealed Himself uh, to Abraham in a previous chapter. He is God Almighty, and we have to receive Him as such. Uh, there is a sense in which uh, we can be intimate with God, we can speak to God uh, as a friend, but only if we do it with the proper reverence. We have to recognize that He is God and we are not. 
and to, uh, and to uh, put him in the proper place in our minds and in our hearts as we do seek his presence. But then we also have to come to the Lord and receive the Lord's presence in accommodation. Uh, the uh, Abraham here accommodated the Lord and went above and beyond to accommodate the Lord and, and these two angels. Now listen to what he does here in verses 4 through 8. He says, Please let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will bring a piece of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, after that you may go in, since you have visited your servant. And they said, So do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quickly prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make bread cakes. And Abraham also ran to the herd, and took a tender and choice calf, and gave it to the servant. And he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed it before them. And he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. And so he accommodated these guys. He made sure that they had every need met. Washed their feet, prepared bread, prepared meat, prepared milk. And these guys uh, were fully taken care of and above beyond what they needed. Um, as you read uh, how much Abraham prepared for them, you, you, you get the idea that they could have lasted several days, maybe even a week on the food that he provided them, uh, but he wanted to make sure that they were well nourished and well taken care of. And so he made the proper physical accommodations for the Lord's presence. And the same thing is true with us as well. We need to make the proper physical accommodations for the Lord. What this means is, is that we do, we make whatever sacrifice is necessary to see to it that the Lord has our attention and that, the, and that the Lord's presence can come into our lives and we can receive that. Uh, some practical examples uh, might be that I clear away my schedule. I clear away a certain amount of time in the morning. Maybe I get up a little bit earlier, make the sacrifice of losing just a little bit of sleep so that I can uh, spend time in the Lord's presence. Or it might mean uh, telling other people, hey, I'm going to be in God's Word at, at this particular time. Uh, no phone calls, no distractions. This is my time with the Lord. Uh, it could also mean putting our cell phones away uh, or any other distraction that might keep us from really being able to focus on God. There's some physical accommodations that we can do to, to better receive the presence of God in our lives. But then we come to the last point, and it's maybe the most difficult one, but uh, I might would dare to say the most important one out of all of these, and that what that is is uh, Abraham continued in the presence of God. Uh, look what it says in the latter part of verse eight. It says, "And he was standing by them under the tree as they ate." And then when you also look at verse uh, 16, Then the men rose up from there and looked down toward Sodom, and Abraham was walking with them to send them off. Abraham didn't miss a moment with these guys. As they were eating, he was standing under the tree. Even when they were about to walk off, he walked with them to send them on their way. Abraham continued in the presence of the Lord uh, as he had the opportunity to be there. And so in our own lives, we have to make sure that we continue in the presence of God as well. Uh, it's very easy for us to maybe cut away some time in the morning, get in our daily word, uh, maybe spend some time in prayer, and then the kids wake up, and they get busy, and, and they begin to distract us. Or uh, we walk into the workplace, and, and the noise of the printers, or of the, the drills, or uh, the people, the conversation we get engaged with, or just the work itself, uh, distract us. And before we know it, our minds drift away from the presence of God. And when our minds drift away, our hearts drift away. And when our hearts drift away, we, bring, we put ourselves in a dangerous position uh, to where perhaps the flesh begins to get engaged. Uh, it's very important that we uh, spend time in the presence of God and continue in the presence of God as the day progresses. And, and yes, we do get busy, and there are things that we have to take care of, and our mind has to uh, engage in certain activities to get our job, to uh, 
to work at our job or to deal with the kids or whatever else. But we always need to draw back. We always, always need to, from time to time, step back and just uh, reflect back on the Lord again. And, and maybe say a prayer or two. It might, we may only have time to say a sentence or two, but just to tell the Lord how much we love Him and, and ask Him to stay near us as we continue through our day. And maybe even revisit God's Word uh, at lunchtime or during the afternoon. Do whatever it takes, in other words, to, to maintain an awareness of God's presence in our lives. If we just do it in the morning, that's great. That's wonderful that we have that time in the morning. Uh, but uh, if it fades as the day goes, goes by, uh, then we can lose a lot. And so as we receive God's presence in our lives, let's remember these things. Let's have a time of stillness where we just sit still and wait on the Lord. Let's have time or let's make sure that we seek the Lord in, in eagerness, in reverence, that we seek Him, accommodating Him, doing whatever it takes to receive Him, and that we do it in a continual manner. And that is that we continue to seek God's presence as the day goes by. Well, hopefully this uh, devotion has been uh, helpful to you guys uh, in, in how to receive God's presence in the proper way. I uh, do thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you all have a great day. I love you guys. God bless.